Hi there and welcome to 256 Shades of Grey, a video explanation of common radiology problems. These podcasts are designed by a team of medical students, junior doctors and our resident consultant radiologist, Dr. Dave Richardson, consultant at University Hospital North Durham. The series will take a case-based approach, guiding you through key radiological investigations, their indications and their interpretations. Important learning points will be provided at the end of each session. So this is a 30-year-old man who, whilst under the influence of alcohol, fell over and came into casualty with pain in his left chest. Otherwise fit and healthy and well, out for the night with his mates. And here's a chest ready rough. Casualty officer saw him and saw pain in the left chest and requested a chest radiograph. So when we look at a chest radiograph, what we have to decide is, is, is this the correct patient's chest radiograph? This is the correct patient. We've checked his name and identity. Then I suggest we look at whether we think it's normal or not. Now that comes with seeing many chest radiographs. But the basics of any radiology is if it's air, it's black. If it's bone, it's white. And soft tissues are shades of grey in between. When you see lots of chest radiographs, you, you will quickly identify an abnormality. And then you've got to work out where that abnormality is. And from there, what that abnormality is. So, here's the chest radiograph. The first thing to note is you have a black line extending down the soft tissues of his left chest. So now we have to decide whether this black line is real, in other words, a pathological finding, or it is an artefact, something in the patient's clothing, for example. The patient doesn't have any signs of clothing elsewhere. He's, he's, in other words, was bare-chested when we took the chest radiograph. So it is likely that this black line is a real pathological abnormality. There is nothing similar on the right side, Remember, for lots of radiographs, chest and pelvic x-rays are the good, good examples, you have symmetry, and you check left and right. So here we have a black line on the left, no black line on the right. So some might ask the question, well, is the absence of a black line on the right side the abnormal? The clinical history states left-sided chest trauma, so it is likely that the black line on the left is abnormal. So what, is, what can this black line be? Black, as I said to start with, tends to indicate gas. Fat can look black, but if we check with other soft tissues on the chest radiograph, we can see that the lung here appears rather black, has a similar appearance to this black line here. Lung, the lung base is, is not quite as black because there's more soft tissues overlying it, but if we pick a, an area of lung between the ribs, it's blackish with a similar density to this black line in the soft tissues. So this black line down here, there's good evidence that this is going to be gas within the soft tissues. Remember the clinical history. The clinical history was, fell over and bashed his left side otherwise fit and healthy and well. So in the trauma setting, you then look for other problems. And fractures are a good place to start. So when you're looking at fractures, you have symmetry in the chest x-ray, as I have said before. So we follow the ribs down, follow them, follow them down, follow them down. Now, when you follow them round laterally, here we can see a broken end of a rib there, the lower end of the rib is overriding it, so we have a centimetre or so of rib overriding it here. If we compare that with the right side, you can follow the rib all the way around beautifully with a nice, nice curve of the cortical margin without breach. Then you go to the rib below that, this one here. Here again, this rib. There's a rib cut off there, 
and the distal bit of the rib, the more lateral bit of the rib, lies here, and the broken end of the rib is here. So there is a, a fracture of these two ribs, and a third rib, at least. So there's fractures of at least three ribs. Again, compare with the opposite side, no suggestion of, of rib fractures on the opposite side. So we have at least three rib fractures. We have gas in the soft tissues in the history's trauma. So the next thing to do is look for any evidence of a pneumothorax, which might mean gas has escaped from internally to produce the subcutaneous gas, which is what this is, or the soft tissue gas. The other explanation, if it had been a stab wound, gas is coming from the externally, but there was no history of a stab wound. So we now look for a pneumothorax. And pneumothoraces can be really difficult to see. So we're looking for a lung edge. Now with the eye of faith, there's a lung edge here. Now this is very difficult to see. And so I am now adjusting the windows and levels on my monitor to see this area more clearly. I'm losing definition elsewhere, but you can see a line here. The other way of looking for pneumothorax particularly in a traumatic setting, is, is there any evidence of any liquid within the pleural space? Not gas, liquid. And there is a, a line of density in the costophrenic angle here on the left, which is not apparent on the right. The right side is normal. There's lovely deep costophrenic recess. Here there's this white triangle filling in the costophrenic recess. In the history of trauma in a young man, this is going to be blood. So there's fluid, i.e. blood, in the costophrenic recess. There's a line, a relatively horizontal line at the top of it. This is what we call a fluid level. To have a fluid level, you must have liquid and gas within the same cavity. So this is another good evidence that there is gas within the pleural space. The other way is, can you follow the pulmonary vessels right out to the periphery? So here we've got pulmonary vessels. You can see them going right out here on the right side. On the left, there is less blood vessels here, in fact, none above this rib here. And there's that line that I was considering as a pneumothorax. So there's a good evidence now we have an apical pneumothorax, rib fractures, hemothorax, soft tissue gas, and therefore we have traumatic pneumothorax and rib fracturing. Because of his trauma and the worry about this gentleman, he went on and had a CT. And CT is very sensitive for gas in the wrong places, rib fractures, soft tissue injury. So CT is a fantastic investigation for trauma. So here we have his CT of his chest. Now CT is imaged in a slightly different way. We are now looking at this patient's chest as if we were standing at the patient's feet looking upwards at a slice through his chest. So we have the heart centrally, spine and ribs going off either side. Again, if we look at the soft tissues of the chest wall, we have black here as in gas, which looks very similar to the gas within the lungs. And we do not have this on the opposite side. We can see subcutaneous fat, which is a slightly less black or more grey than the actual gas. So this confirms gas within the chest wall. So we now look for evidence of his rib fractures, which we saw on the chest radiograph, which are here. To look at the rib, we will just alter the bone settings to a more bone window as we call it so we can see a step here in the rib here and so there's a rib fracture here which is not apparent on the opposite side you can see the ribs nice and smooth going around the chest wall on the right on the left there's a step confirming the rib fracture and then we will now readjust for to look primarily at the lungs so here we have a more lung window. Gas in the soft tissues is clearly shown again around the chest wall, but we now can see more, much more clearly the edge of the lung and black gas within the pleural space. 
more inferiorly have a bigger pneumothorax clearly visible, edge of the lung here, and more inferiorly lots of gas going down into the costophrenic recess. If we compare right and left, we can still see lung with lung markings on the right side. On the left side, no lung markings, just gas within the pleural space. This, is, this lung here on the inferior aspect on the right, his left lower lobe, is very different to his lung on the right side. This is normal on the right. On the left, it's partially collapsed and there's a little bit of bruising what we call contusion in the traumatic setting of the this patient. So this is confirmed in pneumothorax. So we're now going to look back and see what happened next. CT is also useful. We can look at different planes. So here we're now looking at his chest in a more in a coronal setting. And this shows nicely the pneumothorax here, around the heart, which is now white. We've got no detail of the heart in this setting. The lung here, lung here, lung on the right, normal, black costophrenic recess down here. So we will now go and look and see what happened to this patient next. Here we have his chest radiograph following the CT. And a chest drain has been put in, and there is now less chest wall gas. There is still some chest wall gas here. There is also no evidence of a pneumothorax. You can't see the lung edge, the lung apex, which was black, is now grey as if there's lung there. There's still blunted, blunting of his costophrenic recess here. So now look and see what happened to him next. He had a chest radiograph the following day. This is his ch chest radiograph the following day, showing a chest drain in situ. You can still see his fractured ribs. The subcutaneous gas is much less evident, and his pneumothorax is much smaller. This chest x-ray, the day three post injury, you can't see a pneumothorax now. The chest drain has done its job. You can, you can see the injuries around his fractured ribs here. However, you can still see a fluid level in the left pleural space here. So there's still some pleural fluid, but the, the horizontal superior aspect of it indicates that there is still a small pneumothorax. Otherwise, you would not have this fluid level. Right, so learning points on this chest radiograph. One, check it's the right chest radiograph. Two, take the clinical history into account. Remember, this patient is a young man, otherwise fit and healthy well, fell well under the influence of alcohol, bashing his left chest. So, we saw gas within the soft tissues, we saw rib fractures, and then there are more difficult signs to suggest fluid within the pleural space, and a very poorly demonstrated, in other words, a difficult pneumothorax to see. So because of the rib fractures and the gas, we then went on specifically to look at for a pneumothorax, and because of his history, went on and had a CT scan. This video podcast was produced by Medisense. You can find more creative ways to learn differently on our website, www.medisense.org.uk.